What's up guys, Cherim here, you know how it is, another day, another video. So I wanted to do something new today, kind of something that's not Monkey Ball. So this today's video is going to be a Super Smash Bros video. And what am I doing? Well, I'm doing a uh, Super Smash Bros stages tier list. More specifically, Super Smash Bros Ultimate, not the ones that don't appear in Ultimate. Yeah, unfortunately. Sorry, Rainbow Road. I'm sorry. Anyways, I've been trying to branch out from just doing Super Monkey Ball, and I know a lot of people that follow my channel do follow me for Smash content, and I don't do that as much as I should, honestly. I know the Sora video got a lot of views recently, but I figured I should probably do some more content based off Super Smash Bros. So I think this would be a good start. So anyways, uh, that's enough formalities, so let's just get to it. Oh, I should probably mention that Hollow Bastion is not in this list due to, you know, the DLC not really being out yet, so I haven't really played it, and also I couldn't find a tier list with it, which makes sense because, again, it's not out yet. But every other stage prior to that is here, so I'll be starting in alphabetical order actually. So first up is 3D Land from Super Mario 3D Land. Oh, I should probably also mention, again, let's start with 3D Land. So, I'm probably gonna also mention if I played the game and how much the stage feels to me as well. So, I've actually beaten Mario 3D Land. So, this stage I did appreciate a bit. Honestly, though, side-scrolling stages aren't always the best for Smash Bros. But 3D Land is actually not a bad side-scroller to begin with. It's okay. And I really like the transition between the overworld theme and the beach levels. I think that was cool. But it's overall an okay stage. Honestly, I'd give 3D Land maybe a B tier. Next is 75 meters, which... Ah, <laughs> uh, gosh. I don't, I don't even know what to say about this one. We're getting to a really bad stage already. 75 meters is kind of unplayable to play on. It's just it's too chaotic, and there's like no room for anything. Even in 8-player Smash, it's kind of just too much sometimes. I don't know. And even having played the original Donkey Kong... Why didn't they just do the 25 meter level? I don't know. Honestly, 75 meters is actually kind of F tier to me. Next up is Arena Ferox. So I played Fire Emblem Awakening, and uh, this is actually a really cool map. And it was cool to see this for the first time when Smash 4 3DS was revealed. And uh, yeah, I actually really like it. The hazards can get a little annoying sometimes, but most of them are pretty alright. Actually, the one in this picture is probably like the best layout for this level, honestly. Um, the no hazard version is just Final Destination, pretty much. But I really appreciate how the stage looks a lot, and I think I'm also gonna put Arena Ferox in B tier. Actually, I'm gonna put it in A tier. Next is Balloon Fight. So I play. All, I've also played Balloon Fight, and I guess it's a cool level. It, the wrapping around the screen is a nice touch because you know that's how it works in Balloon Fight. But that darn fish is super annoying, honestly, and. Ah, uh, oh gosh. Sometimes it's kind of annoying. At least it's not as bad as Summit's Fish, but Balloon Fight's an okay level. It's nothing special about it. I'm going to put it in C tier. Next is Big Battlefield. A Big Battlefield is an okay level, I guess. It's just there. I don't know. It's good for 8-player Smash, and that's about it. If you play this anything under, like, 6 players, it kind of sucks, actually. So I'm actually going to put it in C tier. And I realize, yeah, I actually skipped Battlefield, but it's okay. Battlefield is next anyway. Battlefield is an iconic level. It is super iconic in the Smash Bros. franchise, and it's very simple, and it's just three platforms, and many stages use that motif now. And honestly, you can't get rid of Battlefield. It's a classic. Honestly, S tier for Battlefield. Next up is Big Blue. Big Blue is from F-Zero. I forgot which one. Well, it's actually in every F-Zero. What am I saying? Yeah. Uh, missed opportunity to not bring the Mario Kart 8 remix to this one. Uh, as a song, I think it's actually, it would have fit very well, but Big Blue is an okay stage, it's not fun to play on because the cars are all over and if you hit the road, you go flying, and even playing the stage with items is annoying because the items will like land on the road and fly off. I don't know, and it's hard for even like Sonic to outrun the road. Honestly, I've never really enjoyed playing on Big Blue. It's kind of an okay stage overall, and I'd give it a D tier, honestly. Next up we have Boxing Ring, which is Little Mac's stage, his only home stage from Punch-Out. Boxing Ring's always been a cool stage aesthetically, and it's actually really awesome having the titles of all the fighters in the back. Although it's a walk-off stage, so that means like cheap early kills. Which is I guess fine for like single player modes, but not playing with friends. Also you can camp on the lights. It's not a good competitive level, but it's pretty cool and pretty flashy, and I actually really appreciate the aesthetic. So I'm going to put Boxing Ring in A tier. 
Next is Bridge of Elven, and Bridge of Elven is pretty infamous because of Brawl. In Brawl, this stage had so many glitches that you could do on it with the regenerating terrain on this one. And I think for that, it just deserves a higher tier swap because this is just a nostalgic stage. And it's very, like, fun to do all the glitches in Brawl. But in Ultimate, uh, I guess they're, it's alright. It's the same as it always, honestly. And I really like the background, though. Bridge of Elden is a really nice looking level. I think I'll put Bridge of Elden in A tier. Next is Brinstar Depths, and Brinstar Depths is an okay level, and by okay, I mean it's not fun to play at all. Like seriously, the stage is kind of fine at first, but when Kraid comes in, I'm kind of like, can you go away? It keeps rotating the stage, and then it becomes like super unplayable. <laughs> Gosh, I hate Brinstar Depths, especially like playing it in like classic mode or something. I th forgot whose classic mode uses it, I think like Zero Suit Samus or Korin both use it, and like, oh my gosh, I, I hate it. It's just something else, honestly. I'm gonna put Brinstar Depths in F tier, honestly. I never found it fun to play at all. Next up we have Brinstar, which is better than Brinstar Depths, but Brinstar is still kind of whack in a lot of ways. The Rising Acid can kill you pretty easily. I think in Ultimate they nerfed it a bit, but like in Melee and Brawl it was kind of a lot. Actually, and Smash 4, I just realized this this stage has been around since Melee in every single game. But I will say, because of that, Brinstar is kind of a classic stage. Very nostalgic to me. But honestly, it doesn't play the best, so I'm going to put it in C tier. Next up is Castle Siege, and Castle Siege is pretty cool because it's got three different transformations. The first transformation is pretty fine, it's a pretty balanced level. And the third one is also pretty fine as well, it's just got one single platform that tilts left and right. The second transition, however, has walk-off ledges, and it's you're inside a castle. I, I guess that's cool. I like this how the stage looks aesthetically, and I love the music from Fire Emblem, don't get me wrong. It's an alright stage. I think I'm going to put Castle Siege in B tier. Up next is Cloud Sea of All Rest, which is from Xenoblade 2, and I've never played Xenoblade at all, so the stage has no like personal connection to me. It's still an alright stage to play, and it actually looks really nice. Uh, honestly, not much to say about this one, I'm just going to put it in B tier, because it looks nice. Next is Colosseum, and I love Colosseum aesthetically. But, you know, I don't really like walk-off levels, because you can literally just, like, get an easy kill. But, honestly, Colosseum is one of the better ones, and Colosseum, being a huge Fire Emblem fan, I really appreciate it a lot. And, yeah, there's not much else to say. It's actually very similar to Arena Ferox. They're kind of, like, the same stage, in a way. But, I like Colosseum better, so I'm probably gonna put it also in A tier. I don't think it's S tier worthy, but I still like it. Corneria is next, and Corneria is probably the most popular Smash stage. Not the most popular, but one of them. I think we'll approach the most popular shortly enough. But Corneria is a pretty good stage overall. It's got nice hazards that are like fun, and it makes you feel like, whoa, I'm in the battle right now. I'm in the battle with Star Fox. And there's also that little camping corner in the bottom left, and yeah, Corneria is overall a pretty iconic level. And I think Corneria has also been around since Melee. It has been in every game since. If we're counting like Smash 3DS and Wii U as one, it's been in like every game. So Corneria, honestly, B tier, honestly. <laughs> you bet you thought I was going to put an A tier, but I didn't. <laughs> Next is Delfino Plaza from Super Mario Sunshine. And, uh, well, Delfino Plaza is kind of just there. It was kind of like one of the first tour levels. I don't know what to call them. Where you kind of get an overview of a place and you stop at random points. And it did it well, honestly. I do think Delfino Plaza is a really pretty looking stage. And all the different transitions are pretty cool and pretty smooth, actually. And I think Delfino Plaza also has some of the best music because Super Mario Sunshine is pretty great. So, Delfino Plaza goes in A tier. Up next is Distant Planet from Pikmin, although it doesn't really resemble any specific Pikmin stage, it's kind of just, oh, it's a distant planet off somewhere. Which, overall, it's an okay level. That red bulb orb on the right side is kind of annoying, but Distant Planet isn't really all that cool. It's kind of just there. It's one of those stages that's there, and I personally like Garden of Hope better if we're going to rank the Pikmin stages, even though there's only two. Uh, Distant Planet is okay, and I think it's the worst of the two, and there's not much to say to it, and I think I'm gonna put it in C tier. Next is Dracula's Castle from Castlevania, which, cool level, honestly. I think the stage is kind of awkwardly designed. Like, those stairs on the right, combined with, like, the bottom platform in the middle, like, you get launched, to, if you get launched to the left or to the right, you'll hit the wall, it's kind of like, oh, okay. 
You know, I guess I have a lot of bad memories of the stage on classic mode because I feel like so many kills happened that happened way too late or I died so early on this one. Like, I don't know. Dracula's Castle is alright. It really it looks really nice though, I think. Has and Castlevania some of the best music, so honestly. Castlevania will go in C tier. Sorry, Dracula's Castle. Next up is Dreamland Game Boy or Dreamland GB, which pretty nostalgic level, starting with the Game Boy Color, you know the classic <whistles> sound. So uh, otherwise, it's just a generic side scroller, and honestly, this stage scrolls really fast that you can get a left blast line kill really early, and I don't know if that's a good thing, and it's not a good thing, actually, I don't know why I said that, but it's not a good thing at all, but it looks really nostalgic, and it's really cool, but it does not play very well. Again, C tier. And now we're probably at the most popular stage in the franchise, and I say that because Dreamland 64 has been in every game except Brawl because Brawl didn't have Smash 64 stages, but it's been in every game since, and it's been the primary competitive stage in both Smash 64 and one of them in Melee, Smash 4, and Ultimate. So yeah, Dreamland is a very iconic level, and I think it's S tier worthy because just of how iconic it is. Also, Dreamland's music, the Gourmet Race from Smash 64, is one of the most iconic video songs ever, video game songs ever. And I'd say Dreamland is S tier. Next up is Duck Hunt, based off, uh, man, I, oh well, it's based off something, you know? <laughs> uh, oh gosh. Anyways, Duck Hunt is an okay level. It's just there. Again, it's just there. There's nothing to it. It's just a flat stage with a tree and, oh, I guess you can hit the ducks, which is a nice touch, but if you miss any of the ducks while you're just trying to defeat your opponent, the dog will laugh at you. Come on. What did I do? I'm just trying to defeat my opponent. Man, honestly, Duck Hunt, it makes you feel bad sometimes. But it's kind of just there, but it's not a bad stage. So I think I'm going to put Duck Hunt in B tier. Next up is King of Fighters Stadium. And actually, this is one of my favorite stages because it resembles a traditional fighting game. There's walls to prevent you from, like, dying. Although, if you get launched into it too far, you'll go, psh, you'll go flying and die. Which... I think it's really nice, and also it looks really cool and has all the SNK characters in the background, except for my, <laughs> because Smash is for good boys and girls, but it still looks fine, and it still looks amazing, and I enjoy the nice touch to fighting games and the nice callback to them, so honestly, King of Fighters Stadium gets an A tier for me. And now we probably have the most played stage in Smash history, which is Final Destination, which, honestly, do I even have to say it? Final Destination's S tier. The stage is just flat, no hazards, and sets the stable for Omega levels. And, uh, yeah, it's also where you fight Master Hand, Crazy Hand, and Giga Bowser. I think someone else as well. And, well, you fight Galeem and Darken in, in, like, a Final Destination-esque level. But you don't fight them in Final Destination itself. But, yeah, very iconic level. Next up is Find Me, based off Find Me 2 for the 3DS. And, honestly, Find Me was a classic of mine during my adolescence and preteens. And I really appreciate the level. It's based off the backdrop from Find Me 2, and the Dark Emperor is there, which you can actually fight with it. So it's a cool interactable stage boss, and I definitely enjoy it. I also enjoy hitting the prince, princess, or king out of the, the cage to free them. Then they come back anyway. So, but, you know, Find Me is a really cool level, and I'm going to get it in A tier. And next is Flat Zone X, which is based off Game & Watch, which... It's cool, I guess. It's a combination of a flat zone from Melee and flat zone 2 from Brawl, and yeah, the transformations are nice, and it's cool that they combine them, but they should have done the same with Picto Chat, in my opinion. But flat zone X, honestly, I can appreciate it, but you know, walk off blast lines are kind of a huge turnoff for me, so I would give it B tier. Next is Fountain of Dreams. Man, what is it with Kirby stages and having balanced layouts? Uh, don't worry, we won't get that for long. But, Fountain of Dreams is a cool level, and it looks aesthetically really awesome, and it's definitely one of my favorite levels out there. The way it plays and the way it looks, honestly, Fountain of Dreams gets an A tier for me. Next is Foreside from Earthbound, and Foreside, I appreciate Earthbound a lot, it's one of my favorite games, but it doesn't play very well. <laughs> especially that slippery UFO, and especially in Melee, oh my gosh, <laughs> that thing's so slippery. It doesn't play very well, but I still appreciate Foresight a lot, but 
since it doesn't play very well, I'm going to put it in D tier. Next is Fragate. Frigate. Frigat. Frig. Friggy. Friggy. Fawful. Frigate. Orphean. Which, I think that's how you pronounce it. Frigate Orphean. Which, it's cool, I guess? It's got that Parasite Queen in the background, and it just rotates, I guess, when it wants to, and it gets dark, and it's kind of just there. It's, it's, Frigate Orphean's always been there for me. Especially because I don't really know what an Orphean is. Maybe it's a Metroid thing? I don't know. Man, you know what? Let's just put it in C tier. Anyways, next up is Gamer, because I'm a cool gamer. But not only are we cool gamers, so is the kid that is here, 5-Volt. No, 9-Volt. 5-Volt's the mother, and 5-Volt is the one that tries to hunt us down during this stage. And I think it's a cool thing to avoid, but it's kind of overpowered, and that thing can kill you very early, actually. And, I don't know, it kind of ruins the gameplay a bit, but I can appreciate the level. And it's kind of stressful avoiding 5-Volt, so, I don't know. Gamer gets a C tier for me. Maybe I'm a little harsh. I feel like I am a bit, but maybe it's because I live with a really competitive Smash player who's my brother. So, you know. Anyways, Garden of Hope is next, and I mentioned earlier that I liked it better than Distant Planet. Although, uh, not by much, honestly. I think it's okay overall. The stage hazards are fine, and yeah, that's not much to say. I'll give it a B tier. Garrick Mock Monastery is next from Fire Emblem Three Houses, and as much as everyone hates Byleth, even though I don't, honestly, it's a cool stage. It's a nice callback to Three Houses, and it really makes you feel immersed in the Fire Emblem Three Houses world. And I'm going to give it a B tier, because there's not much to it, but it's an alright level. You know, I don't really like big stages too much, but Gore Plane, well, it's okay at best. Metal Face kind of ruins this already big gameplay. You really can't feel like you're doing anything on this one. Also, the top and left, the top left and top right are walk off blast zones. Like, ugh, talk about annoying. Honestly, Gord Plane doesn't do it for me. Cloud Sea of All Rest is better, and this is an F tier level. You know, growing up, Ocarina of Time was one of my favorite games, so seeing Gerudo Valley appear in Smash 3DS and Smash Ultimate, I was like, <gasps> Gerudo Valley! And of course that remix does not disappoint. Gerudo Valley is one of the coolest stages out there and it looks really nice and very faithful to the original. And Koume and Kotake making an appearance, they make it a little bit better. And honestly, yeah, I love Gerudo Valley. Solid A for me. Although, walk off last lines, uh, I'll let it slide. Just because I love Gerudo Valley so much. <laughs> People are going to hate my bias. They're going to come at me in the comments, aren't you? I know you guys. Anyways, Golden Plains. You know what's funny? New Super Mario Bros. 2 is one of the few New Super Mario Bros. games I've never played, but it's funny because I do own the game. I just never played it. It's one of those games I've owned but never played. And the coin mechanic is interesting, but when you turn into a golden character, it's super overpowered on a very small stage to begin with. And it scrolls as well. You can die so easily on this level, like literally at zero, like when you just spawn. It's kind of crazy. Honestly, Golden Plains doesn't do it for me. D tier. You know, I mentioned I love Docker enough time. I also love Majora's Mask, and Great Bay does not disappoint. But Great Bay is a little weird. Honestly, you can get launched into the ceiling at the bottom and go down the water, or you could get launched to the ceiling at the bottom and go down the water and live. This stage is kind of random at times. And even like Tingle's Balloon and the Turtle that pop up just add to it, honestly. And But it's a cool level overall. And then the moon crashing down is, honestly, it's a nice touch. C tier for Great Bay, though. Another Zelda level. We got Great Plateau Tower from Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which is an alright level. It's kind of just there, honestly. There's not much to it besides, you know, the top platform changing to like either a wall or a middle platform. That's pretty much it, you know? Uh, well, I don't really have much to say about Great Plateau Tower. I think it's alright. B tier. And honestly, you know how Dreamland is iconic? Green Greens, on the other hand, kinda sucks. Literally, those bomb blocks ruin everything. No, seriously. You could get launched by them and go downwards onto, like, under the stage. It's so annoying. It's also hard to recover sometimes because Wispy will push you underneath sometimes when you're trying to get back up. I don't know, <laughs> Green Greens... It's just so annoying sometimes. Dreamland 64 is way better. D tier for green greens. The next stage with green in its title is Green Hill Zone from Sonic the Hedgehog 1. And 
I just love the stage for the aesthetic alone. It's so reminiscent of Sonic the Hedgehog, and even if you zo had free camera and zoom out, you could see the amount of detail they put in the stage in Sprawl. Brawl, Smash Bros. 3DS, and Ultimate all have this stage, and it looks really great. Although, it's so easy to die on this level, and oh my gosh, I actually remember I did a, like a 5 player match the other day, and I think I lost like all my socks relatively quickly on Green Hill Zone, because we were doing like a for fun chaotic match, but like, oh gosh. For that, I kind of, it's the same reason as Gerudo Valley, I feel like there's a bias here, but I'm going to put it in B tier, because... It's easier to die here than in Gerudo Valley. Next is Halberd. Well, that's Meta Knight Chip. He played an important role in the Subspace Emissary. Well, overall, it's an okay stage. It looks nice, it kind of just brings you around the Halberd and then till it brings you on the Halberd, which those hazards can be kind of dumb, but they're overall kind of neat. Honestly, not much to say about Halberd. I'd give it in the B tier, just because I, I like it so much. And then we have Hand and Bow, which is from a DS game called Electroplankton that nearly not anyone played, so nobody played this game. Hand and Bow is an okay stage. It's kind of just there, and it doesn't play well at all. In fact, th that water can also be misleading for you to swim on it when you can't. Hand and Bow is not really fun to play at all. I'm not going to give it an F tier. Next up is Hyrule Castle, which I don't like at all. It's too big, and the tornadoes can really kill you at early percentage. And, uh, yeah, it, you can't even launch anyone upwards or to the left or to the right. It's too low. It's, yeah, like, uh, too high, I mean. Like, not too low, honestly. It's just, uh, I never liked that root castle. I'm sorry, D tier for it. Jungle Japes is next, and I didn't like this stage either. It's so annoying. When you go into the water, it's so hard to get out. Sometimes the random claptrap will just spike you. Like, honestly, uh, what were they thinking with this one? But it looks nice, but why the heck is Cranky living in a shack that's just obscured by rushing water? He's kind of trapped there forever if he doesn't know how to swim. Oh well. Jungle Japes, it's an okay level. I appreciate it because Donkey Kong stages are cool, but D tier. Next is Kalos Pokemon League, which is probably my favorite Pokemon stage in the game. Playing Pokemon X and Y, of course. It's got all four chambers of the Elite Four, including, you know, the neutral one, and... Yeah, it does it well, even with the legendaries and all the hazards, everything's just all over the place, and you can tell they put a lot of effort into Kalos Pokemon League. I'm going to put it in A tier. Next is Congo Falls from Melee, and I'm actually going to also review Congo Jungle 64, because they're kind of the same level. Not really, they have different layouts, but they both have a barrel cannon at the bottom. But Congo Falls is like a mix of Congo Jungle and Jungle Japes, but... The cl random claptraps do appear again and can spike you. It's just so annoying, honestly. And that both barrel cannons are not reliable. And Congo Jungle also has a really high upper blast line. And I'm like, dude, it's hard to make KOs on it sometimes. They're both going in C tier for me, honestly. Next up is Living Room from Nintendogs. And come on, man. Who hasn't played Nintendogs? Such a bop, honestly. Nintendogs is a cool level. I mean, sorry. Nintendogs is a cool game. But Living Room is a cool level, but it's kind of just there. It's just a flat surface, and then occasionally things will fall down, like dog toys and stuff. But, yeah, I mean, they're not that bad. It kind of gives some variety to the level, but it's not crazy awesome. Honestly, Living Room, also C tier. Next up is Luigi's Mansion from Luigi's Mansion, which... I love Luigi's Mansion. It's pretty classic, and yeah, there's not much to say about it, but it looks nice, and it's got a cool aesthetic. It just feels like this mansion's so small, than compared to the actual Luigi's Mansion. Like, imagine if this Luigi's Mansion was, like, the size of the mansion in the actual game. It'd be kind of weird, right? <laughs> Luigi's Mansion gets a B tier from me. Next up is Lilac Cruise from Star Fox, and Lilac Cruise has always been super cool. Plus it has that cool easter egg of, you know, having the codec conversations with Fox and Falco and Team Star Fox, and also Wolf with Team Star Wolf. Honestly, Lilac Cruise has always been up there for me, and it's also a pretty chill stage, and it's a very controversial competitive stage, that I know for a fact. But Lilac Cruise has always been really awesome, really aesthetically pleasing, and it's got the one of the coolest easter eggs ever. Honestly, S tier for me. The Lilac Cruise. Magikint's next, which is from Earthbound and Earthbound Beginnings, and Magikint is one of the most aesthetically pleasing levels to look at. 
just the pink clouds everywhere and all the references to Earthbound Beginnings and Earthbound. And as a huge Earthbound fan, <laughs> sign me up. Although it's an okay level and the Flying Man gimmick is a little overpowered at times, but I still appreciate it a lot. A tier for me. Mario Bros sucks. Let's move on because Mario Bros is just Mario Bros and we all know why it sucks. It's so unplayable, honestly. <laughs> but yeah, Mario Circuit is fine. Mario Kart 8 is definitely a game I'm pretty decent at and I've played it a lot and it, it's actually funny how it has the original Mario Circuit layout. So yeah, thumbs up for that. It's one of those stages where it starts and stops, but honestly the hazards can get a little overpowered. And although I like this stage, I kind of wish Rainbow Road from Mario Kart 7 would come back to Smash Ultimate. Unfortunately, it's not happening. B tier for Mario Circuit. Figure 8 Circuit is next, which is based off Mario Circuit in DS. So, cool. The Shy Guy races are there. This has always been a classic level to me. Although, it's just easy to kill on this one. Those Shy Guys are pretty darn powerful, but you can hit them off the track, so that's kind of cool. Also, that sign in the background using the Mario Kart DS, like bottom screen vibes. That's kind of what I see. Yeah, it gives me Mario Kart DS bottom screen vibes. But yeah, I like figure 8 circuit. I, I would say it's on par with Mario circuit, so B tier. Mario Galaxy is next, and well, it's Mario Galaxy. It's kind of just there, and it's really easy to KO people, and there's not really much to it except that it's an angled level, I guess. And there's not much to it. Mario Galaxy is kind of just there, but it's Mario Galaxy. Let's see Mario Galaxy is a really good game. And it's also got some really good music. So, honestly, Mario Galaxy also gets a B tier from me. Mementos is next, and Mementos is an S tier stage for me. Just being a big Persona fan and all the references, and even with the stage changing color based off the music, what a nice touch. Honestly, and Persona music is just so good, and they all play on this level. S tier for me, for Mementos. Midgar is next, and Midgar used to suck because it only had two songs, but now it has 11, so it's better. But I actually have always liked the aesthetic of Midgar as well. Midgar's always been a really cool level because it's just Final Fantasy VII, and it looks it is a really detailed level in the background. And honestly, this stage was Final Fantasy VII Remake before Final Fantasy VII Remake. So, what can I say, you know? Honestly, A tier for me for Midgar, because I also like the hazards on this one too. Minecraft World is next, and Minecraft World is okay, it changes layout every single time, just like Super Mario Maker, and yeah, it's Minecraft. It's a cute little world, honestly, and it's just kind of advantageous to Steve. So if you're Steve and you play on this level, well, good luck. B tier for me. Mishima Dojo is next, which it's kind of just there, I like it. It's, it's not much to say about it. I like how you can break through the walls and stuff, and Heihachi's just chilling in the back. But there's not really much to it. I like King of Fighters Stadium, honestly, better than this. Um, still a B tier for me. And you know how I said I don't really like big stages? Moray Towers is one of them. One stage, one stage that comes to mind when we talk about good big stages is Temple, but we'll get to that in a bit. Moray Towers is not really super fun at all, honestly, and I'm get a flashback of this one thing in Toon Link's classic mode, where it's three Toon Links versus four Inklings, and it's so chaotic and confusing, you have no idea what is going on in this one. And I'm like, dude, can you not? <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, man. Anyways, Moray Towers unfortunately goes in D tier for me. Mushroom Kingdom 2 is next, also known as the Subcon, or just Kingdom 2, because in Melee it was literally just called Kingdom 2. Anyways... Mushroom Kingdom 2 is alright. Birdo and the Pidget being there is fine, but this is a cramped stage. Oh gosh, don't play the stage with 8 players. It's kind of just there. C tier. And now, all I'm at it, Mushroom Kingdom is also kind of C tier. Although I really appreciate going through the warp pipes with the piranha plants. It's kind of just there as well, and it's easy to die on this one. So C tier for Mushroom Kingdom. Mushroom Kingdom U, however, is also C tier. <laughs> Honestly, why do we have all these variants of Mushroom Kingdom but not Bowser's Castle? The closest thing we get to Bowser's Castle is in this variant of the stage. There's a little tower, which I guess has like the obstacles from Bowser's ca Castle, but like, I don't know, it's not the actual Bowser's Castle. I wish we got a Bowser's Castle stage instead of Mushroom Kingdom U, and because of that, I'm gonna put it in C tier. And they have Mushroomy Kingdom, which is the fourth one of the Mushroom Kingdom saga, but this one, 
it got botched since Brawl, because Brawl also had the World 1-2 variant where you're underground, but this one doesn't. It's World 1-1, but with the, like a very sad desert twist, which looks cool, but it's a side-scroller level, and it's so cramped, and you can barely play on this one. This one would be cool if you could go into stages alone, one player, but you can't do that here. So, honestly, Mushroom Me Kingdom is D-tier to me. Next up is Mute City SNES, which is weird how they didn't bring the Mute City from Melee, but they brought back this one. Again, it's reminiscent because it's 8-bit and all, but when you copy stages, it's sometimes they don't work, like Mario Bros. in 75 meters. It's cool to stand on the cars, but sometimes the other cars will push it out of the way and you'll get sent flying off. And I don't understand how the characters jump and don't get flown off. You know, technically they're jumping forward when they jump in place. These type of stages never got to me like that, but anyways. Mute City SNES, good looking stage, does not play very well, C tier. New Donk City Hall, and New Donk City is from Super Mario Odyssey, which is a very fun game, and New Donk City plays very well. It's cool to see the little band performance too. When they revealed the stage for Smash Ultimate, I was like, hmm, I appreciate this level. New Donk City Hall's alright, B tier. You know, a lot of people hate New Pork City, but I actually like New Pork City. Not because Mother 3 is my favorite game of all time, but I think it's actually a pretty decent big stage. There's a lot of little camping areas where you guys could all fight, and then you also got the ultimate chimera that kind of just instantly kills you, which I guess adds balance to not dying enough? I don't know. And then you also got the little limo in the bottom, which is fine. I don't think it's an amazing big stage, but I don't think it's as bad as the other ones. So honestly, let's give New Pork City V tier. Next we have Norfair, which I've actually never liked Norfair. It's so easy to die on this level, and you get racked up damage so easy in this one. Like, oh my gosh, Norfair is just Norfair. Also, like, you got the little lava tidal wave that, like, instantly kills you. Like, ugh, why? And this stage makes a frequent appearance in classic mode and adventure mode. Like, I've seen this stage so many times, I'm so sick of it. I'm sorry, Norfair. I don't mean to be rude, but I'm going to put you in the D tier. Next is Northern Cave, which is from Final Fantasy VII, and, well, that's where you fight Sephiroth. It's also Sephiroth's stage in his pack. Well, it's an alright stage. It's pretty cool, and I actually appreciate it. And this stage is the reason why we have more Final Fantasy songs in Smash, so I'm going to put it next to Midgar in the A tier. On its next, and as much as I love Earthbound, On it does not play well. It's very chaotic, and those cars do way too much damage, On it's like 30 damage for getting hit once by them. Oh my gosh. And there's all items and appearing everywhere, and oh gosh, you can just get launched and die at like 40% on this level, which the cars give you 30%. Ugh, on it. C tier for me. And here we have Pac Land. <laughs> uh, Pac Land. I love Pac Man. I'm actually a huge fan, fan of Pac Man. Not even just the classics, but like the franchise as a whole. And Pac-Lan was not a fun game. Why did they make this stage? Why does it exist in Smash Wii U? And then Smash Wii had the better stage, Pac-Maze. And they only brought back Pac-Lan. Which I can understand why they didn't bring back Pac-Maze, but they could have tried to rework the original gimmick. Because the gimmick of Pac-Maze is to have multiple screens. But, I don't know, just get rid of that gimmick. And just have the ghosts all around, you know? You don't have to get rid of the stage entirely and just have Pac-Lan here. Pac-Land is not fun at all, it's just a side-scrolling level. It goes back and forth. That's it. Ugh, Pac-Land. Z-tier. That's right, it's my first Z-tier level. And, actually, next is my second Z-tier level, like Palutena's Temple. There's a such thing as too big, and the stage is too big. Like, seriously. And especially if you're only playing this with two players, what is the literal point of this lawn? God, I hate Palutena's Temple so much, it's Z-tier. Next up is Paper Mario, which has two transitions based off Paper Mario Sticker Star, and the next one based off Paper Mario Thousand Year Door, which is... Uh, okay. If it's called Paper Mario and it's mostly Sticker Star, which is considered the worst in the series, too, why? <laughs> if they're gonna introduce Paper Mario, at least do more than just one stage of Thousand Year Door, which is just the ship for Rogue Port. And then Sticker Star, it's got two stages. I will say the third transition, again, is the closest thing we'll get to Bowser's Castle. But nobody even gets to the third transition anyway. And that transition also sucks because the Bowser head in the middle just rotates. The stage is kind of unplayable. And it's based off a really bad game. D tier. 
Peach's Castle 64. Fun fact, I've actually never liked this level. The giant bumper on the top is so annoying. Those little two roofs on the side can prevent you from killing. And sometimes those platforms at the bottom can just get annoying and not let you reach it. D tier as well. Picto Chat 2. So, what I said earlier with Flat Zone, Picto Chat 2 is a missed opportunity. Picto Chat 1 has not made an appearance in Sprawl. 2 made an appearance in 3DS and it makes appearance here. But why didn't they just combine the them too. There are some transitions for the first Picto Chat that I actually really enjoyed, but they're not in 2. Although 2 has better transitions overall, I do like Picto Chat 2 a lot, but it's a missed opportunity that they didn't combine the first two to make Picto Chat X. Although it's a cool level and very reminiscent to my old DS light that I still have to this day, B tier. Pilot Wings is next, and Pilot Wings is a really cool level because it's based off Pilot Wings and Pilot Wings 64 and a Pilot Wings Resort. So you get to fly through Woohoo Island and you get to fly through the original Pilot Wings level and that's it's pretty cool actually. I don't I don't see anything wrong with that. Pretty fun tour level, B tier for me. Pirate Ship is next, and Pirate Ship's always been a fun level, but I've never really liked it to play on. That catapult sends you way too far and those cannonballs when they shoot at you, oh boy. Not to mention the tornado lifting you up in the sky, that's always pretty fun. Imagine that one event match from Brawl where the stage was always raining and it would always be flung up to the sky and you had to kill the two Yoshis. I don't know if you guys remember that, but that's what the stage always reminds me of. The Omega version of the stage looks really cool, but it looked better in Smash 4. I don't know why they made it look worse in Ultimate. Pirate Ship's an okay level, B tier. Next is Pokemon Stadium 2 and Pokemon Stadium. I'll cover them both because they're pretty much the same stage. They both have the same initial layout, they just have different stage hazards. Stadium 2 has ice, electric, and flying, I think is the stage hazards. Oh, and ground. While Stadium 1 has fire, grass, water, and rock. Stadium 2, I like their hazards better, but Stadium 1 is more iconic, and honestly, Stadium 1 is more used in competitive play, I believe. Also, I don't know why you competitive players call Pokemon Stadium 2 PS2. Like, no, it's not a PlayStation 2. It's Pokemon Stadium 2. Come on, guys. They're both B tier for me. Next is Port Town Air Dive. Which, yeah, it's called Port Town Air Dive because it's just Port Town from F Zero, but it's an aerial view of it. All the F Zero stages are basically the same thing, honestly. Mute City and this stage share so much similarities, and I can understand why they didn't bring Mute City back if they have this one. I like it. Shoutouts to the giant Rob in the background. It's alright. B tier for me. Next is Princess Peach's Castle, which I've always hated this level because it's so hard to get kills on this one, unless you have like the Bonsai Bill Hill. The Bonsai Bill here is just... I don't know. It's just... you got, It forces you to go on the other side of the stage, and if you're too far, you won't make it. And yeah, it's just really hard to kill on this level. Not really a fan of Princess Peach's Castle, but it's not terrible, so C tier. So I want to say I find it weird how they brought back Prism Tower but not Pokey Floats. Prism Tower is just there, and there are two Kalos levels. Prism Tower is fine, it has got ni nice cameos, but it's just there, honestly. It's got cool stage transitions, but I don't know. I don't think Lumio City is a good song to fight to at all. It it's fine. Prism Tower is fine. C tier. Rainbow Cruise. Ugh, gosh. I don't like stages where it's hard to kill, and then it just starts scrolling. They're cool levels for like one player or two player adventures, but anything more than two players, these stages suck. And Smash is meant to be played with more than two players, you know? Yeah, that's right, competitive fans, I'm calling you out. Anyways, Rainbow Cruise, not a fun level, F tier. Reset Bomb Forest. Reset Bomb Forest is a lot like Castle Siege, but it only has two transitions. The first transition is actually a pretty chill transition. The second one is a little too chaotic because there are walls everywhere and it's super hard to kill. But I appreciate this also because I appreciate Kid Icarus Uprising a lot. I'm going to give Reset Bomb for us a B tier. Next is Saffron City from Pokemon Red and Blue. And this is a classic stage, also with the classic Charmander coming out, you know? So Saffron City, it's alright, but like Foresight, it just doesn't play well. It, it sucks when you're Ness or Lucas and you're stuck in between the stuff and you can't get back up. Because you can't use PK Thunder to hit yourself up. You know? I never liked that. Honestly, I'm gonna give it D as well, just like Foresight. But actually, no. I'll give it C, because it plays better than Foresight. Next is Shadow Moses Island from Metal Gear Solid. Which, 
Shadow Moses Island has some good Metal Gear Solid music. I'll give it that. But, yeah, that's kind of it. It's hard to kill unless you're killing upwards, which then, yeah. But you can break the pillars to get an easier kill, so it makes up for it. B tier for Shadow Moses Island. Skyloft is next, and Skyloft is really awesome. It can transition to many parts of the place, and most of them are pretty decent transitions. There's not much else to say about Skyloft, but I'll give it A tier. Next is Skyworld. Skyworld, I hate it. There, I said it. I don't like Skyworld at all. I think Classic Mode kind of made me feel this way. But it's because the CPUs are so stupid on this level. When that bottom platform comes, the CPUs will do their very hardest to go for it, even if they can't reach it. And they'll end up like SDing. Why? <laughs> the stage, the CPUs are super broken on. I'm really not a fan of it. Also, it's just, you get bounced stuff all over the place. Or sometimes you'll go through the clouds, and I'm like, dude, F tier for Skyworld, I'm sorry. Next is Small Battlefield, which was such a random addition to the game. It's kind of just, it's Small Battlefield, what can I say? A tier. And next is Smashville, which is iconic. And you know, while I'm here, I'll cover Town and City as well. They're basically the same stage. Smashville is more known, though. Smashville is from Animal Crossing Wild World, I think, and then City Folk is based off City Folk. And, uh, yeah, Town and City and, and Smashville, they're kind of the same for me. Smashville will be an S tier because it's just widely used in competitive play and it's really iconic. Town and City will go an A tier for me, just because I like Smashville a little bit more. Next is Spear Pillar from Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, and Ayo, the remix are coming out this month. No, next month. <laughs> oh gosh, I almost spread misinformation there. <laughs> Anyways, Spear Pillar's fine. Dialga and Palkia kind of break the stage, though. <laughs> Especially Palkia. When Palkia comes on, the stage is not fun at all. Cresselia is also fine on this one, but yeah, just don't play the stage with Palkia. C tier for me. Next is Spiral Mountain. Spiral Mountain's cool. It's got nice Banjo-Kazooie references. And yeah, there's not much else to say about this one. I like how the layout just keeps rotating, so it's not feeling like you're the same stage all over again. B tier. Next up we have Spirit Train from Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks, and like, just like Big Blue, I don't really like moving levels too much. It's okay, honestly. Spirit Tracks is fine. Also, Spirit Tracks wasn't really the best Zelda game out there. It's okay, I guess. D tier, though. Spring Stadium is next, and I love ARMS music so much. Spring Stadium plays pretty fun, and yeah, honestly, Spring Stadium, I actually think I would give it an A tier. Summit's next, and it's Summit. Well, that giant fish that swallows you and instant kills you is my number one enemy to mankind. Summit's cool, but when it starts going down and starts getting in the water, it gets kind of annoying to fight in. Those icicle drops, the fish, the water... It's sliding down and you falling off the right side. There's so many ways to die on this level, and it's like, oh my gosh. I just, I, I thought this was Ice Climbers, you know? Sorry, Summit. You get a D tier as well. And I'm sorry, I don't like Mario Maker either. It's just so random, and I don't know. It's You can't tell what you're going to do when you play this one. That's why most people play the Omega version of this one. I do appreciate how it switches the styles, though. And if you're listening to one of the overworld themes, it will keep changing. I think that's really cool, actually. I can appreciate Mario Maker, but it does not play well at all. So Suzaku Castle has one walk-off blast line, but I like Suzaku Castle. I like it the way it looks, it's really cool. And it's got Street Fighter music, yeah, Street Fighter. So honestly, Suzaku Castle gets a B for me. And next we have the best big stage, and this is how you make a big level. Temple is honestly the most iconic Smash stage ever. And I said that about Final Destination, Battlefield, and Dreamland, but Temple is also really iconic and it's also been in every game since it's appeared it's been in brawl smash 4 wii u and now ultimate and love temple live live love temple we're gonna give it an s tier because for fight club and now we have a z tier level the great cave offensive this stage is so big that they had to find a creative way to actually kill you at over 100 which honestly in ultimate when everyone's damage does so much you'll die so much easier on this level like, literally, if you're, like, against Incineroar, in four hits, you can die by touching the lava. Like, oh gosh, what were they thinking when they made this one? Although, it looks nice, but, ugh, nope. Tobodachi Life is next, and I wish I played that game more when I was 
the 3DS was still a thing when I was younger. Tomodachi Life is a good game. But the stage, it's okay. There's nothing much to it. It's just Tomodachi Life, you know? Tomodachi Life, C tier. Next is Tortimer Island. And Tortimer Island is... It's just an island stage. Nothing too crazy about it. Definitely not the best Animal Crossing stage, though. Especially because Smashville and Town and City just way overlook it. Anyways, Tortimer Island, B tier. One row remains. Next we got Umbra Clock Tower. So, well, it's the only Bayonetta stage in the game. And it's got some of the coolest background, coolest background transitions. And Bayonetta music is really good. A tier for me for Umbra Clock Tower. Next is Unova Pokemon League, which I feel like this is what Spear Pillar should have been. Well, it is, because it's its own thing. Reshiram and Zekrom don't go crazy on the stage. And then the other Pokemon that appear... It's fun to just see them there if you turn hazards off. But yeah, Unova Pokemon League is what Spear Pillar should have been. Where did I put Spear Pillar actually? Did I put it in B tier or C tier? I put it in C, so Unova Pokemon League goes a little bit above it. Venom is just worse, Corneria, and it's not as iconic as it, as it. Honestly, Venom's just. It's just Venom, honestly. Venom is C tier to me. WarioWare Incorporated. WarioWare Inc. is a fun level, honestly. The little mini games that you could do, or micro games as you do, make the stage more lively. Although sometimes some of the rewards are way better than others. And, but without hazards, this stage is actually pretty chill, too. It's kind of just gets a vibe in WarioWare Inc. You got the little pig in the background, it's cute. Honestly, B tier for WarioWare Inc. Next is Wii Fit Studio from Wii Fit and. It's, I don't know, what does it say? It's just a flat level with a bunch of moving platforms. What else is there? We, there's some fitness tips. I guess if you want to stay tip. If you want to stay fit, you know? Just, we fit, you know what I'm saying? So, C tier. Next is Wily's Castle, which is Mega Man stage. And, ooh, yes, I love that. Mega Man stage Wily Castle is so cool. Yellow Devil makes a nice boss fight into this. And the music, oh uh, gosh, Mega Man 2 Medley. People, when they hear it, oh my gosh. A tier for Wily's Castle. Next up is Windy Hill Zone, the other Sonic stage. And, well, Sonic Boss World wasn't a good game. <laughs> it was okay, honestly. No, it wasn't a bad game. It wasn't good, though. Uh, Stage plays fine. It's not too much going on B tier? I'm kind of running out of like arguments for a lot of these levels. Wrecking Crew is next and again, it's, see, there's a lot of stages that are just there and Wrecking Crew is there. Nobody plays the regular version of it unless you're like playing random. The ladders are cool. I guess it's cool that you can attack on them in Smash Ultimate, but like, yeah, there's not much to do. Just destroy stuff and hopefully they don't fall on you, I guess, C tier. Woohoo Island. Actually, you guys are going to hate me when I say this, but I find Wuhu Island to be an S tier stage. I think it's super awesome, has the right amount of transitions, and just playing Wii Sports and Wii Sports Resort so much as a kid, uh, the stage gets to me a lot. Love Wuhu Island so much. S tier for me. Next is Yggdrasil's Altar. So I've actually played Dragon Quest XI, although I never beat it, I'm stuck on the final boss. But Yggdrasil's Altar is cool. It's just there. You got nice little slimes bouncing around. And if you play Dragon Quest XI, you'll actually appreciate the scenery because it's just the whole map of the game. Yeah, B tier for me for Yggdrasil's Altar. Next, we have literally the four Yoshi stages. We have Yoshi's Island Brawl, Yoshi's Island Melee, Super Happy Tree, and Yoshi's Story. I'm probably going to go all four of them at once. Although, I'll start with Yoshi's Story and Yoshi's Island Brawl because they're both kind of just stages that are just there with little clouds or ghosts supporting you if you're about to fall off. Yoshi's Story I will give A tier because it's iconic level and also just for Randall, the cloud, you know? Yoshi's Island Brawl gets a B tier for me. Yoshi's Island Melee gets a D tier for me. It's super hard to kill on this one and sometimes it's annoying just like going off and the flipping blocks or like when you use like an attack that sends you downwards going through the blocks and dying. Super Happy Tree is way too big, and it's really campy if you're a high jumper with the clouds. Never really liked Super Happy Tree either, and that's D tier for me. And that's that! That's my Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Stage tier list. 
My favorite stages are Battlefield, Dreamland, Final Destination, Lilac Cruise, Mementos, Smashville, Temple, and Woohoo Island. While my least favorite stages include Pac Land, Palutena's Temple, and the Great Cave Offensive. And, well, what can I say? What, do you guys agree with me? Do you guys disagree with me? I bet a bunch of you do disagree with me. Because I know I'm known for having some weird opinions on the internet sometimes. But let me know if you agree in the comments. And, yeah, let me know if you want me to do more Super Smash Bros. videos or tier list videos. Yeah, just let me know. And subscribe if you're new. Subscribe to my YouTube. And follow me on Twitch and Twitter and everything else you can ever dream of. And join my Discord server. Anyways, that's all I have today, so goodbye everyone!